What is up, Janksters? It's your boy Graham, also known as HamHawks42 on the internet, and today I want to discuss the keyword Death Touch. So Death Touch is a fairly straightforward keyword, and all it means is if this creature deals damage to another creature, regardless of how much damage it deals, the other creature dies. It's really that simple, or you destroy the other creature, I should say. So in this case, we have an example of Moss Viper. Now you will see Death Touch on a lot of smaller creatures because these creatures have the ability to block very large creatures and trade with them in combat. Now it is important to note, the creature does need to deal damage to the other creature. So if we're attacking with the Moss Viper, our opponent needs to block with something in order for us to take something down. Um, and in the, that case, it's the defender's choice as to what creature they put in front of it. As a result, Death Touch is kind of a sneaky, evasive ability because people tend not to want to block it, especially when it's on a smaller creature like a Moss Viper. So if you have ways of buffing this creature, you can do cool things with that. There are also some key examples um, where Death Touch is even more powerful, and that's when it's combined with Trample or First Strike specifically. When you add First Strike or Trample to Death Touch, cool things happen. In the case of Trample, um, what can happen is a larger creature with Death Touch and Trample can actually trample through for more damage because you only need one damage to kill the creature that is blocking it. So that's pretty darn slick. Um, for a more detailed explanation about that, feel free to check out the Trample video uh, in the cards. We, in the case of First Strike, if a creature has both Death Touch and First Strike, if it meets with a creature that does not have First Strike in combat, the Death Touch creature will strike first and kill the defending creature or the the other creature before it has an opportunity to deal damage back so in that situation we could have a 1-1 death toucher with first strike blocking a 10-10 that does not have first strike and the death touch creature will prevail in that situation and kill the 10-10 unless a few conditions are met if the 10-10 has first strike or double strike then they'll trade if the 1010 has indestructible. Uh, more to come on a future video about how that works, but destroy effects such as Death Touch would no longer impact that 1010. And so indestructible is another way to get around that. Also, any effects that prevent damage uh, do prevent the Death Touch trigger from occurring because no damage is dealt. So protection from certain colors, like if a creature has protection from green, Moss Viper can can strike against that creature or you know can't block that creature, but that creature could block a Moss Viper all day and we wouldn't, the death touch would never occur. So those are a couple of situations to be aware of, a couple of things to keep in mind. Death touch is a keyword that appears primarily in green and black, um, although you will see it in some other colors. Also, if you have a way to grant the death touching creature the ability to deal non-combat damage, um, death touch still triggers. So if you have an equipment or an aura that gives it the ability to tap to deal damage, such as the Viridian Longbow, this gives a creature the ability to tap and deal one damage to any target. As a result, you can take your little death toucher, just tap it down and ping something and kill it immediately, regardless of how big it is. Again, as long as it doesn't have protection or indestructible, you're good. Um, the other ways to do that are fight spells. So fighting um, or the direct damage ability, like cards like Ram Through or Rabid Bite that de have a creature deal damage equal to its power to another creature. Those are all great ways to really take advantage of Death Touch and really ramp it up. So Death Touch is a cool ability. It's very, very simple. The best value that you will often get from small Death Touch creatures like this is keeping them back to block. People rarely want to attack into a Death Touch because they know they're going to give up their best attacker in most situations. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. That's an important way to use Death Touchers. Um, also, I would highly recommend using Death Touchers alongside Ninjutsu if you're playing in a format where Ninjutsu is legal uh, because, that, because people are very hesitant to block them, and as a result, they're good Ninjutsu enablers. In any event, thank you so much for checking out the video. I appreciate it. If you want to see more videos like this, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment on what topics you would like to see covered in future videos. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you on the next one.